Mm. I remember we were on a class, uh, on a journey with a school class, and uh, uh, I was in the seventh degree, like 13 years old. I put on the Tödliche Doris, this hardcore di genius dilettante noise band from Berlin with uh, lyrics about uh, blood coming out of a wound and uh, pumping in the rhythm of the heart and, and about the dance of Marika Röck and better to have no heart than a heart made out of uh, pepperoni or something like that. And it was there for 15 seconds and then a guy just turned it off and said fuck off with your idiot music <laughs> so felix yes tell uh, me yeah what are you doing here in copenhagen i'm not I, um, i'm searching for uh anderson anderson Hans, it's a german Hans word Christian, what is no it's a, a fa famous fairy tale um ah, writer okay. because he's got a very dark soul you know and really? i yes i can refer to that he's my favorite fairy tale writer hmm. probably you have to say here Hans Christian An Anderson or something like that. Anderson? <laughs> Anderson. I wasn't the lonely guy in the class. I was like the comedian in the class, but still I was, uh, if, even if it sounds contradictory, uh, I was still an outsider there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, this, is a, yeah. this is a great, great lamp, you know? Do you know this lamp? Yeah, I it's very lamp. famous. I think it's called the Hans Christian Andersen lamp. So when did you start to make music? Because I know you're some kind of uh, oh. just as, as much obsessed like, <laughs> uh, like I am. No? Yes, yes. Uh, Macho Moretti, maybe should introduce you, is yeah, uh, yeah. from Warsaw. He's uh, like a very central character. Everyone in Poland actually knows <laughs> Macho because he played in every band, <laughs> because he can play you know, every example, instrument. You know, for example, I'm going to be the musician, I knew it since I remember. Mm. But uh, composing, like writing the songs with the mm -hmm. guitar or something, probably like when I was 12 or something. No, well, that's early enough. This is the. This was the lamp where he was sometimes standing there like this, and then he was going like, "Oh, I'm so miserable. I'm the so music miserable." Was there at the background. This music was running yeah. exactly. It's uh, it's when you touch the lamp, then the <laughs> music comes up. But one thing I really admire from what you do is that uh, I can always see that you work with a big collective of people. Uh, your label Lado ABC is a really big collective. Um, it started as a kind of a communist platform, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone was uh, able to release a record and it was not so much a strict centralized curat yeah, curation. It's still, it's, still, it's still not centralized. It causes some troubles, but yeah. also it's a... Uh, I mean, depends on how you look at it. It's a uh, liberating or kind of, you know... Unprofessional. Uh, yeah, unprofessional completely. Polish economy. Yeah. And then he was like, oh... I got an idea for a miserable, nice fairy tale. And then About he was the snow, taking some right. of the snow, creating these artificial tears. So, so because he was actually a, a very funny man, but so people saw him and always thought, oh God, Hans Christian Andersen has again. been crying again. I was working at a, a surgery and I was imitating a doctor from uh, East Germany, from the GDR. And then I always said like, um, yes, uh, it's Dr. Kirsten. What have you done with my patient? And so <laughs> he was, I, I don't know. He was, he was tipping his tongue. I really don't know what I've done with your patient. I have to, uh, but I, I, I send it to you, no? And then he was checking this. <laughs> and everyone hated me there at some point. They all said, I remember we had a little party um, and then all they sat together with me and said, Felix, you're very immature and you will learn that life is hard and, and that uh, you can't go on like this all the time. Actually, now I think I'm still doing this. <laughs> and they were not right. <laughs>
So it was like Nachtarbeit ist Arbeit in der Nacht. There's this Polish wonderful word called kombinować, yeah. and it uh, describes the uh, actually the Polish uh, survival technique of permanent improvisation. Yes, that's so we true. And that's why also maybe you're so close to jazz music and to improvised stuff there. No, because you have a very big jazz tradition there. Yeah, yeah. Even though if you you have a punk background, yeah. <laughs> so jazz is kombinować. Really, yeah, and and of course you can kombinować in a good way. You can kombinować in a bad in, way. In a I mean, way, yeah. in the cost of the others, but yeah, you can yeah. also kombinować trying to put all the things together and like. They fall in place. Every record we release, it's completely total kombinować thing. Yeah? You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you no, because it's always you know because we are. Operating on, as, on a such low financial level, we have to combine with all the time. You know? yeah. Basically, everybody does that, you know. But in Poland, no. I think that's the, 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 the feeling of community. Let's say community of, of artists. Let's call it this way: the people yeah. who know each other and kind of support each other. This is like a perfect playground for kombinowania, you know. For example, the record that we just recorded together, uh, in we recorded it in Warsaw. Yeah. Uh, the place where we should record it was uh, sh uh, was changing every half week or every uh, yeah, yeah. every week. It was like okay, we now have to we can record it in Łódź. There's a place. Okay, great, Łódź. And we already looked at the flights and stuff like that. <laughs> and then uh, Felix, uh, little problem. Uh, no, not a problem. Little opportunity. <laughs> and in the end, we recorded it in a blind people house. And all the time, you see all these people like. Tick, tick, tick. All around yeah, you, yeah, yeah. all the time, all the time, everywhere. Also, the owner of the studio, yeah. he was blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we had only, I think, ten, nine days to not only record but also compose, compose bit, the arrange. compose and arrange the whole record. And all the time was like, oh, uh, we wow. don't have enough tracks yet. What do we do? Yeah, you played some <laughs> of this uh, rhythm before. Can you just? Or someone was just sitting in the corner, a bit bored, like doom, 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 doom. Oh, yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. In the last sequence, I was still recording when the taxi that should bring me to the airport was waiting outside. So the guy already uh, rang at the door, <laughs> and I was still, I was like, wow, wow, this is it, this is it, and then boom, 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 boom. And get, yes, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. One minute, and then doom, 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 and then I thought, no, how, how am I gonna arrange it? I'm arranging it later, part two. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it was going on. <laughs> and this was the track Creeper. Yeah? Yes, this was the track Creeper. It oh was really gosh. like, like, bath time, clap, to the door. <laughs> of course, already eight euros on the fucking taxameter. <laughs> that cost you eight but, uh, euros. That cost oh, me eight euros. Know. No. <laughs> Fuck that. It's <laughs> about the idea.